In a certain place there lived two friends, Dharma Bodhi, which means having a just heart and Papa Bodhi, which means having an unjust heart. One day Papa Bodhi thought to himself, I am a simpleton, plagued with poverty. I am going to travel abroad with Dharma Bodhi, and earn money with his help. Then I will cheat him out of it and thus gain a good situation for myself. One day he said to Dharma Bodhi, listen, friend. When you are old, which of your deeds will you be able to remember? You have never seen a foreign country, so what will you be able to tell the young people? After all, don't they say, his birth has borne no fruit, who knows not foreign lands, many languages, customs, and the like. And also, one never properly grasps knowledge, wealth, and art, until joyfully one has wandered from one land to another. Papa Bodhi, as soon as he had heard these words, took leave from his parents with a joyful heart, and one happy day set forth for foreign lands. Through their diligence and skill, Dharma Bodhi and Papa Bodhi acquired great wealth on their travels. Happy, but also filled with longing, they turned homeward with their great treasure. For it is also said, for those who gain wisdom, art, and wealth in foreign lands, the absence of one hour has the length of hundreds. As they approached their city, Papa Bodhi said to Dharma Bodhi, Friend, it is not prudent for us to return home with our entire treasure, for our families and relatives will want part of it. Therefore let us bury it somewhere here in the thick of the forest and take only a small part home with us. When the need arises, we can come back and get as much as we need from here. For they also say, a smart man does not show off his money, not even in small amounts, for the sight of gold will agitate even a good heart. And also, like meat is devoured in the water by fish, on land by wild animals, and in the air by birds, he who owns money is everywhere at risk. Upon hearing this, Dharma Buddhi said, yes, my friend, that is what we will do. After having thus buried their treasure, they both returned home and lived happily together. However, one day at midnight Papa Buddhi went back into the forest, took the entire treasure, refilled the hole, and returned home. Then he went to Dharma Buddhi and said to him, Friend, each of us has a large family, and we are suffering because we have no money. Therefore, let us go to that place and get some money. Dharma Buddhi answered, Yes, my friend, let us do it. They went there and dug up the container, but it was empty. Then Papa Buddhi struck himself on the head and cried out, Aha! Dharma Buddhi! You and only you have taken the money, for the hole has been filled in again. Give me my half of what you have hidden, or I will bring action against you at the king's court. Dharma Buddhi said, Do not speak like that, you evildoer. I am in truth Dharma Buddhi, the one with a just heart. I would not commit such an act of thievery. After all, it is said, the person with a just heart treats another man's wife like his own mother, another man's property like a clod of earth, and all beings like himself. Quarreling thus, they proceeded to the court where they told their stories and brought an action against one another. The top judges decreed that they submit to an ordeal of God, but Papa Bodhi said, no. Such an ordeal is not just. After all, it is written, in a legal action one should seek documents. If there are no documents, then one should seek witnesses. If there are no witnesses, then wise men should prescribe an ordeal of God. In this matter, the goddess of the tree will serve as my witness. She will declare which one of us is a thief and which one an honest man. To this they all replied, what you say is right, for it is also written, an ordeal of God is inappropriate where there is a witness, be he even a man of the lowest caste, to say nothing of the case where he is a God. We too are very curious about this case. Tomorrow morning we shall go with you to that place in the forest. In the meanwhile, Papa Buddhi returned home and said to his father, Father, I have stolen this money from Dharma Buddhi, and one word from you will secure it for us. Without your word, we shall lose it, and I shall lose my life as well. The father said, Child, just tell me what I have to say in order to secure it. Papa Buddhi said, Father, in this and such a place there is a large mimosa tree. It has a hollow trunk. Go hide in it. When I swear an oath there tomorrow morning, then you must reply that Dharma Bodhi is the thief. 
Having made these arrangements, the next morning Papa Bodhi bathed himself, put on a clean shirt, and went to the mimosa tree with Dharma Bodhi and the judges. Once there, he spoke with a piercing voice, sun and moon, wind and fire, heaven and earth, heart and mind, day and night, sunrise and sunset, all of these, like Dharma, know a man's deeds. Sublime goddess of the forest, reveal which of us is the thief. Then Papa Bodhi's father, who was standing in the hollow trunk of the mimosa tree, said, Listen, listen. The money was taken away by Dharma Bodhi. Having heard this, the king's servants, their eyes opened wide with amazement, searched in their law books for an appropriate punishment for Dharma Bodhi's theft of the money. While they were thus engaged, Dharma Bodhi himself surrounded the tree's opening with flammable material and set it on fire. When it was well ablaze, Papa Bodhi's father emerged from the hollow tree. His eyes streaming, he cried out bitterly. What is this? They asked him. He confessed everything and then died. The king's servants forthwith hanged Papa Bodhi from a branch of the mimosa tree, but they had only words of praise for Dharma Bodhi.